walking out one afternoon and she was staring at her very, she had very arthritic hands. I said, Mama, what? And she said, I'm just looking at these old, ugly, arthritic hands. Hmm. Now normally I would have said, all those hands are fine, Mama, or here's some hand lotion. But when you know your mom doesn't have that much more time with you, it, everything is different. And I sat down with her and I said, Mama, besides how many dishes you told me those hands have washed, and how much clothes those hands have washed, those hands wiped my tears and combed my hair, held my daughter, held my grandchildren, and gave me a good whack on the family where I deserve <laughs> I said, those are the best hands in the world. And my mother just looked at me and said, thank you, Linda. And that was one of the most wonderful moments of my life. Now, you were with her for how many months before she passed on? Well, she took, after she was diagnosed, it was 18 more months. And so you well, as you know, if you've been watching my show all these years, uh, I love to introduce you to people that have maybe a little different thought and, and uh, something that's unusual. And uh, I had a call the other day from a lovely lady, and her name is Linda. And Linda said, Sue, I've heard about your show, and I'm in Tampa, but I would like to come down and share a book that I am lecturing. I'm going all over the country. I wrote the book and it just came out, I believe you said, in October. Yes, October 1st. And already you've sold 4,000 copies? No, 450. Oh, 450,000 <laughs> 450, after tonight. I, How I about that? I think the rest that? are on order. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but well, after tonight, we'll wait and yeah. see what happens. But it's called, it's a beautiful title, Good Night and God Bless. Now, how were you inspired to write this book? And have you ever written a book before? I've never written a book before. Since I was a kid, people told me I should write a book. The past 10 years, I've been on this journey about acknowledging and appreciating people. Good for you. And I don't think we do that enough. We don't say, I love you enough. We mm -mm. don't say, thank you. I appreciate you. And I do that in various different ways. But things really came to light when my mom became ill. My mom had moved down here um, from New York. And I couldn't tell you that accent. No, from no. Long Island. <laughs> and how long ago was that? Um, well, now it would have been three years ago. Okay. And she moved here in June, and in October we found out that she had stage four colon cancer. Oh, goodness. But I will tell you, although that's a terrible prognosis, the last eight, 18 months of her life were some of the best times we ever had. Had you been close to her before that? I was close to her, but I don't think I ever really let her know how much I really appreciated her. And how, are you an only child? No, I'm the oldest okay. of four. Oh, well, that would um, make a difference too. Yeah, it's very interesting. My, I, I've always loved my mother so much, but loving your mother so much is one thing. Telling your mother how wonderful she is and what she, how she's changed your life and different things like that, it's, it's just so important. And you know, you said as you are now uh, promoting the book and lecturing, you're finding that people are responding and saying to you, thank you so much because uh -huh. I remembered to call my mother today or yeah. I remembered to send her a card or I remembered to do something. And it's not so much for those that might be grieving because they've already lost someone right. that they love. Tell the story you were telling me in the green room about her hands. I thought that was beautiful. One day my mom was at my house and she spent a lot of time watching those judge shows. She loved those judge shows. Mm -hmm. and I was in my office and she'd always call out, is there anything I can do for you? And there was nothing she could really do for me. I remember walking out one afternoon and she was staring at her very, she had very arthritic hands. Mm -hmm. and I said, Mama, what? And she said, I'm just looking at these old, ugly, arthritic hands. Mm. Now normally I would have said, all those hands are fine, Mama, or here's some hand lotion. But when you know your mom doesn't have that much more time with you, it, everything is different. And I sat down with her and I said, Mama, besides how many dishes you told me those hands have washed and how much clothes those hands have washed, those hands wiped my tears and combed my hair, held my daughter, held my grandchildren, and gave me a good whack on the fanny when I deserved it. <laughs> I said, those are the best hands in the world. And my mother just looked at me and said, thank you, Linda. And that was one of the most wonderful moments of my life. Now, you were with her for how many months before she passed on? Well, she, for, after she was diagnosed, it was 18 more months. And so you had a lot of time to really bond with oh, her and... We had an adventure. And so, but you said that the title of the book, Good Night and God Bless, it, I think a lot of us say that to our children. I say that to my yes. children every time I talk to them, you know. But, and not always good night, but sometimes just God bless, talk to you tomorrow or, you yeah. know, whatever. But what, when were you really inspired that you were going to write this book? Well, actually it was... It was like, kind of like was, a diary, right? Yeah. Yeah. Actually it was... Um, 
one week before my mother went into hospice, so it was five weeks before she passed away, mm -hmm. and I was at her place, and she was very ill, and I was tucking her into bed, and she said to me, good night and God bless. Mm -hmm. And she had said that to me thousands and thousands of times before, but I really thought that was going to be the last night. I didn't think my mom was going to make it through the night. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, she did. I decided that night, well, I'm going to write a book, and that's what the title of it's going to be about my mom. And I think the Lord said, okay, we're going to give your mom some more time here. Because I then proceeded to live the four, last four weeks of my mom's life in hospice with her and my sister also. And, um, and you were writing the book at that time? Ferociously. And then after she passed and through the grieving and then through the beginning of the healing. I, my mom passed away on December 14, 2007. And I wanted to finish the book by her birthday, which was April 2008, mm -hmm. where I didn't. But I finished it on Mother's Day of Beautiful. 2008. And the last line of my book says, Happy Mother's Day, Mama. I hope I always make you proud of me. Oh, that's beautiful. Now, um, you are donating portions of the uh, proceeds of this book yes. to a couple of different charities. Two dollars from each book goes to uh, Hospice of the Florida Sun Coast. And two dollars from each book goes to Gulf Coast Oncology Foundation. And they're a relatively new foundation. And they help cancer patients with non-cancer needs. So if they need a rent payment or a utility payment. I can remember being in the doctor's office with my mother one day and there was a woman that came in with starting her chemo. And when she was filling out her paperwork, her address was homeless. Oh my goodness. So we don't even have a clue about the things we need to be paying attention to. God works in such mysterious ways. Yeah. I'm glad he's in control. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm not in control. Yeah. We're talking about how old was your mother when she passed? 78. Yeah. You know, did you ever remember a lady by the name of Jean Dixon? Yes. Yeah, I had a chance to meet her one time, and uh, I was really uh, helping take care of a little boy who was four years old who was really very, very ill with leukemia. And uh, I had her meet this little child, and I said, please pray for him, because I feel there could be a miracle. I really did. It didn't happen. He did pass away. And she called me shortly after that, and she said, Sue, she said, you know, sometimes, I couldn't tell you this at the time, but she said, some people are called to live to be maybe 100 years old or mm -hmm. 90 years old. She said, sometimes God brings a child into your life. That child will teach us more in three or four oh, years. Yeah. Then it takes a lot of people to learn in a lifetime. Exactly. And the reason I'm saying that is I get the feeling from your book that you're kind of taking, that's a very personal thing that you did. You're taking people on a journey. Yes. And this is something that at any age, and I think your message is so totally apropos, that we don't love and tell each other how much we love exactly. each other. We don't hug enough. Exactly. If we could, you know, I don't know if you saw any of the uh, inauguration today. Yes. But um, there was a poet that he had, and... Uh, and she was talking, it was a little bit, a little bit um, oh, more out of uh, metamorphosis or whatever, but mm -hmm. her message at the end was love. That if everybody could just love one another, I mean, imagine what the Beatles say, but what was the world? Uh, all you need is love. All you need is love, <laughs> you know? And I don't know how to make that happen, but I think that with people like you, people like Chris that just called here, the lady Jennifer and Chuck the clown, People, those are people reaching out, doing mm -hmm. things, and they're, they don't have to be things that are so grandiose. I have a seven-year-old granddaughter. She'll be seven in March. Mm -hmm. We have a contest when we go out. Who can make the most people smile? Mm, what a good idea. And she'll say, I have 29. What do you have? I said, I have 10. They're all smiling at you. <laughs> but we need to smile. We and it need does, to. doesn't mean a lot when you go out and you see someone and they smile. And you, and you smile. Yes. And you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful, wonderful thing. I always tell my granddaughter, who's nine, I say, I love you. I love you more than all the stars and all the sky. Uh-uh, Grandma. Then I love you more than all the <laughs> water and all the oceans and all the world. And then we'll go back and forth and How like good that. does that feel? Oh, it feels wonderful. And so I guess tonight, if our message could be anything, it's love and love one another and love your fellow man. And, and laugh. And laugh. Have a little patience. And, and have an opportunity to possibly pick up this book. How did they find it? Yes, you can get it at my website, which is goodnightandgodblessthebook.com.